Is the earth flat or round? It's round. Okay, now let's see. How do we go about proving that? That's a hard thing for me to even start talking about because there are so many proofs that the Earth is round, it's difficult to know where to start. B.O.B., the rapper, I have a video letter to him, the transcript of which is in letters from an astrophysicist. That rose to that level of attention because he started saying, I am using laws of math and physics to show Earth is flat. Those are fighting words. You're going to say using math and physics? That is an alarm to the geekiverse that we must rise up and, and counteract these forces from the dark side that are out there. There are proofs all around you. It is not difficult to know that the Earth is round. So let's start from the simple to the slightly more complicated. One of the things you can see yourself with a pair of binoculars is if you actually go out to a lake and there are boats on that lake, the farther away a boat is, the more the bottom of the boat will disappear and you'll basically just see the mast of the boat. And as a boat goes farther and farther away, the last thing you will see is the very top of the mast of that boat. And that's because the boat is actually going over the horizon that's curved. And that means that as it goes farther and farther away, you see less and less of the bottom of it and more of the top of that. You can see that with binoculars by an ocean, by a lake. It's really easy. That wouldn't happen if the Earth were flat. You would simply see the boat getting smaller and smaller and smaller as it went farther away, but you'd be able to see the whole thing with the same proportions. Go to the uh, seashore. Go to a seashore and figure out why you can't, if you live on the East Coast, figure out why you can't see Spain from the East Coast of North America. Just go uh, to the middle of the Mississippi River and look south. Why can't you see the Louisiana? Why can't you see New Orleans? What's, what's the problem there? Well, then climb a tower or go to the top of a hill or a mountain and you'll see a little farther, but you will not see to the other side of the earth, places we know to exist. For example, I've been to London. I, I can tell you, other people have. I've been to Vancouver, British Columbia. And you cannot see Vancouver, British Columbia from, from Boise, Idaho, let alone from New York City or Toronto or what have you. Then there are some other proofs that are a little more obscure, but they're actually really lovely. And one is to observe what happens during a lunar eclipse. Now, a lunar eclipse happens when the Earth casts a shadow on the moon. The moon actually goes dark. In fact, if you've seen one, you can actually see the Earth's shadow go across the moon. And when the moon is entirely in the Earth's shadow, the moon looks kind of dark and even kind of red colored. It's really, really beautiful. What's happening in that case is that the sun is on one side of the Earth. The Earth is in the middle and it's casting a shadow. The Earth is casting a shadow on the moon. And as the shadow moves across the moon, you'll notice that the shadow is curved, it's round. So something like the sun that's bigger than the Earth and is able to cast a shadow of the Earth on the moon can actually show you the shape of the Earth. Aha, you might say, but could the Earth be a disk? Could it be flat, but it's actually still shaped like a disk, not like a sphere? There was a Greek scientist called Aristarchus, and what he noticed was that you can get a lunar eclipse at many different angles where the sun is. Sometimes the shadow goes straight across the moon. Sometimes it just kind of glances the moon, just a little bit is in shadow, just on the top or on the bottom. From every different vantage point, every different angle that the sun is casting a shadow, you always get a perfectly curved shadow. The only shape that can cast a shadow that's curved from any direction you put the light is a sphere. So people have known that the Earth is spherical for thousands of years. Look at pictures from space where you see the Earth as a sphere. Those pictures are not faked. And I'll tell you, just if nothing else, here's why you can tell they're not faked. Just to create the paperwork that NASA has created, for in NASA in this one case, just the paperwork to send anything out in space, to send people into orbit or to send them to the moon. That amount of paperwork would make faking it prohibitively expensive. No one could afford to generate that much, that much documentation.
Then the other thing, if you want to get into this, if you're really serious, if your friends are really serious, have them get on a boat or a ship and go out at sea, and you'll notice you can't see infinitely far. Furthermore, if you get into it enough, pick up a, a book about navigation or go online and learn about navigation. A very, very important thing you have to take into account when you try to navigate the ocean from a ship or a boat is how high you are off the sea surface. The higher you are off the sea surface, the farther you can see, the farther away the horizon is. I actually said this to somebody, and I couldn't believe they'd never thought of it, that you know, with binoculars, you can see planets. You can see Saturn and Jupiter. You can, you can see Mars with a telescope, the sun, the moon. Everything else you see in the solar system is a sphere. So we're, we're the one thing that is different. You know, and, and that actually that actually made somebody who was who was more interested in actually hearing information, that actually got them to think. They were like, You're right, you know, you know, everything else we take a picture of is a sphere. And you guys, come on. Everybody watches newscasts, you all use mobile phones, you all see airplanes fly around, you all go to uh, see Ed Sharon in concert one day in London, another day in Melbourne, Australia. This all depends on our fundamental idea, understanding of the size of the earth and its shape with extraordinary precision. And if you want to get into it, the earth isn't quite a sphere. It's a little bleh. Its spin is a little bleh, stretched it, made it slightly oblate, as the saying goes. And it's not okay to think that the earth is flat. This is not a viable argument. Um, I have friends who have been on the International Space Station. They have orbited the earth once every 90 minutes. You know, I have had personal experience with people that have been up in space and can see with their own eyes that the Earth is round. And of course, we've taken all these amazing pictures from space. They're so beautiful, all those pictures of the Earth. So I don't really know what's going on right now with this Earth is flat thing. In a debate, what is the construct? It's typically two people, and there's an audience, and you debate some opposite sides of some issue, and then there's a winner of the debate. And then everyone walks away reflecting on the winner. So who wins a debate? It's often the person who's, who's charismatic, who, who's maybe charming, that's related to charisma, of course, who has a good way with words, good vocabulary. And you can have someone who doesn't have any of that, who is speaking objective truths, who could lose a debate. So then what is the point of the debate if one of these points of view is objectively true? So I will not enter a debate where I have the objectively true side of an argument and the other person does not. That is something that should not be debated, does not belong in front of an audience getting debated. If you want to debate something, debate political policy of what to do in the face of climate change. Do you have carbon tax? Do you have do you, do you, uh, uh, solar panels? Do you subsidize them? Debate that. Don't debate something that is or is not objectively true in this world. This is all susceptible to analysis, but spend some time uh, it's learning about navigation. Tell your friends to spend some time learning about navigation. Ah. Navigation's changed the world, by the way. What are you wearing? You're wearing stuff that came from another part of the world on a ship. It didn't get here by magic. It got here through science. I think it's important to combat people who are claiming that they are using math, science, evidence, and physics behind their cause when, in fact, they either aren't or they're using it badly. That needs to be called out. Otherwise, if you just have a belief system, I don't really care. We live in a country that protects free speech, which usually also means free thought. You want to think Earth is flat? Go right ahead. But if you start influencing other people who have power over other people, and you have no foundation in objective reality, it can, it can be dangerous. If you influence people or you yourself become someone who has influence over legislation, laws, rules by which we all abide in society, that's an unhealthy situation for civilization to be in. If your personal belief system, which does not have correspondence in objective reality, starts becoming predominant in the thoughts and hearts and minds of civilization.
it's not okay to say that the earth is flat. This is some sort of strange denial. I don't know where it comes from. And it's something where I keep getting this question. We really need to put this question to bed because we've known the earth is a sphere for a long time. Get smarter faster with new videos every week from the world's biggest thinkers.